All right, so my name is Damien. Uh, I've been using BandLab for probably about a year and a half, two years. Um, anyway, so if you open up the application, this is gonna be your main screen you see. Um, you see there's messaging up on the top. That's for talking to other artists and other friends on the app. Then you can post stuff into the feed. And then this is your main feed. So this is based off of people that follow you and, and people you follow. It'll show uh, content based on that. And then this is trending, which is people that are more popular on the app. And it will uh, it'll show it'll display their stuff. Here you can uh, you can check out beats. Uh, if you ever see this option that says fork on the bottom of somebody's project. If you click that, that'll allow you to open up the project into the mix editor and uh, and edit it and make your own version of it or use this beat. Um, so now getting more into that, on the bottom of the screen you have a home symbol. That's the page we're on. Then you have a compass symbol. So you can search. Th these are all uh, recent, recent releases and stuff like that. Um, or you can search up on the top, like uh, I, I search, I have a couple friends. You can search by hashtag or like uh, Rocky. Okay, so I type in Rocky. Rocky's a friend of mine I make music with um, and I can find his profile. If you, Sometimes there'll be a lot of people with the same name on the app. So where it says at stoned juggalo 420 on the bottom that's gonna be their actual identify, identifying username. So if you can't find somebody you're looking for, you type that into the search bar and it'll take you directly to their profile. Now, if you move over to the bell icon, this is notifications. This is just updates of things. So like somebody commented on a recent song that I just po posted um, along with multiple other things. Um, if if progress has been made in in a certain song or something like that it'll notify you in here as well um if somebody liked your post as well as uh shared it stuff like that it'll, all that shows up in here or if somebody forks like that that thing i showed you about forking um if somebody forks a revision of your song and publishes it it'll notify you in here and then right here you have invites so this is uh rocky whitman again that person i was talking about so if i hit accept this is uh, inviting me to a song, a project that he's working on. So now I have access to that. So let me go back to notifications. Moving over to the little folder with the music symbol on the side. You click on that and this is, this is all of my projects. Anything with a lock symbol next to it is unpublished. Anything that doesn't have a lock symbol is stuff that I've published. Um, this right here, it says, I don't know. That's uh, That was published by somebody else, but it's, uh, in a, it's in a band that I'm in, which is Talent Agency. And, uh, and these are all just other different projects that I'm working on. You'll see it says J Flock plus one other, on, where it says C class, it says J Flock plus one other. That means that there's a different, there's a, there's another, an additional person in this song that uh, that is working on this project. So if I if I click on that, you'll see it says J Flock on the bottom, 21st of December, and then 21st of December it says Rook. These are different revisions. So every time you save a project when you're editing it, it's going to save a new revision. So you can always go back and edit. Now. If I hit that plus symbol in the bottom of the screen, right here, it says sampler, make a music with any sound. So this right here, you can make your own soundboard and record different sounds and make music based on that. This, you can import a track from your phone. Uh, you can import a beat. This is voice mic. So this is just gonna open up the studio with a microphone track. I wouldn't, I wouldn't there's really no reason to open this one in particular unless you're actually in the app and you already have a beat set. This is Looper. You click on it and it's pretty simple. Uh, it, it'll, it's just different loop packs and, and you can press buttons to make beats. This is MIDI instruments. This is over 200 plus sounds of, uh, of how to, how to uh, 
like or there's, it's over 200 plus sounds of different instruments that you can use and implement into beats this is a guitar so if you have a an external plug-in that you can plug in and and play your guitar into the app um that's that's what this is for and all that's going to do is open up guitar effects which i'll get into here in just a sec and this is bass so if i exit out of this i'm going to go ahead and just open up a project that's already already here so if i click on this this is just a display of the project i hit mix editor And it's loading the project. So these are all different tracks you can see here. And you can add a new track by hitting the plus symbol. And that's all of those same options you've seen displayed outside of the outside of the the mix editor, what I, what I was just explaining, the import track, voice mic, etc. And so if you want to add a new track, like let's say I want to add a new vocal track, right? I add a new vocal track. Um, and you'll see, so like if I record like this, it's listening to me. And you can play it back. And then you can see it here, what I just said. Or you can delete it the little back arrow if you ever delete something and you don't and you didn't mean to you can always hit the back arrow but when you save once you save you have no you don't have, you no longer have the option to use the, the reverse arrow um another thing as well is let's say you're recording right and you can see the like this and then you have to stop and you have to add a separate piece into a song like right here so i'm adding a different piece in in this section and then let's say i accident i accidentally wrote over a section that i wanted to keep in the back of that if you just take this and you move it up you can actually pull this track over and that's the original track that was there and you can take and you can slice it and you can move that down into its place like that and then now I've restored that section of the song. Um, when you import a beat into BandLab, if you import it from the computer version, I've noticed it doesn't really set the, the, the revision key, which is used a lot for uh, auto-tune effects and stuff like that, and just for general information. Um, in the settings wheel on the top of the screen, if you press it, you'll see this thing that says revision key. This is the key that the song or beat is in. That comes in play later, into play later. If you go to use auto tune, it's set to B major, G minor automatically. If you import a beat from the computer version of Band Lab, it's not going to register the revision key. And so it's gonna look like that. And it'll say chromatic instead of already being auto set. So, if you ever import a beat from the the, the computer version, uh, open up the mobile version, download it to your phone, and report it back in. Unless you know the revision key, but uh, report port it back into BandLab, and it, it'll auto it'll auto set the key for you. Um, if you want to lower your voice in the app, um, you, so there's a there's a couple other external apps from BandLab that they, they'll show you uh, where you can like adjust the pitch of your voice. But if you record a track right and you want this to be like a deeper voice what, what i've done in the past is so it says uh uh g minor here i would scroll down to e minor which is uh so i always just go every other one so skip one skip one skip one and so now i'm here yeah e, e, e flat minor and then if you copy this section of the track and you remove and you move your revision key back up to what it originally was and you paste in now this is going to be a lower pitch on your voice as far as um um 
other additional tools it's really about more just getting integrated into the app and trying different things so like let's say your voice is a little too loud coming in um you can use fade like that and you can fade in or you can fade out of if you want like a beat to fade away and it's like it just has like a hard ending you can make it fade away um also on the on the computer version of band lab you can open up a project as long as there's not uh uh, effects that are exclusively for the mobile app applied to the tracks which would be more customized stuff so so like it let's say i went to effects and so if, if you used any of these effects over your vocals you can open up something on the computer version of band lab and it's monitoring it'll display a line across the track and you can make the track sound levels fluctuate by going up and down and setting different key points in the track if you use something that you've edited that's not on the computer version of band lab it's going to say that it's a customized vocal track or customized effect exclusively only to to uh to that to to uh the mobile version of band lab and it won't allow you to do that um I've, i haven't tried any like other things like maybe removing the effect and then doing the monitoring and then reapplying the effect i've never tried anything like that but um Let's see. And then if you click here, it gives you an option for save or publish. I'm just going to hit cancel. But there's lots of different stuff you can do. Just really experiment. The feather in the middle on top is uh, uh, for lyrics. Now I'm going to back out of this. Um, and so that's, that's the basics of, of, of really just how, kind of how band lab, what, what I've done with it. Um, then you have like your projects here, you have my projects. These are all collaborations. So if you're collaborating with somebody, these are all projects that you, uh, may have with somebody that you're working on. That's just a kind of a quick link to get to those. Uh, these are band projects. So depending on what band you, you select that you're in. Uh, like if I go to Dark Army, these are just projects. And again, if you click on that project, you'll see revisions of that made going back. Um, and then you have albums. So I, I have four albums that I've published, uh, A to Z and a couple others. Um, and it's just whatever tracks you put onto those albums. Uh, I believe that's something you have to do on the actual computer version of Band Lab. But then... There's playlists, so if you make uh, playlists, like I have, I have new artists, Fire, so I just I save, I save artists I like and I put them into there. Um, and then I have A to Z, which is, I was just organizing some songs and stuff. And so then this is bands, so this is all the different bands that I'm in. Um, and then there's communities, so you can join communities. Um, and and in, in those communities, you can like publish stuff, share. Uh, I, I don't. I feel like maybe not a lot of people really get into the communities as much as they should. And then uh, if you uh, click on the folder, so what I do is, is if I'm, if I'm, let's say I'm on the screen, right? Back in the beginning. When you first open up the app, if you're trying to get to your profile, you can either click on your profile picture up in the top left-hand corner, or if you're like in your projects at the time, I just I'll just click this like if I'm going if I'm in notifications I'll just click uh, uh, the folder right here on the bottom and I'll just click the profile picture in the top uh, right hand corner and it'll take you to your profile and that's where you can see everything that you've posted uh, and and you can just go through and kind of see an overview it's going to give you like how many followers you have who you're following uh, it also gives you a spot where you can add additional uh additional uh like links to your profile and so like i have my youtube link to this and you can see it says at anonymous underscore inc that's my username that's how you would search me on band lab and find me follow me i can follow you back and uh we can collaborate on some stuff uh but there's there's a lot more to this app outside of what I'm explaining. I'm just kind of giving you like a brief rundown and 
it's more it's gonna be more in you actually experimenting um and like so if you get into like the the mix editor down at the bottom the plus symbol and you press like midi instruments right you're gonna see a display of instruments here or across the top here you'll see it says basses creator kits drums guitars keyboards and so like if i want to search just specifically keyboards these are all going to be all the different versions of keyboards and so if you click on it it'll download that keyboard and then if you press on it now you have a keyboard active right here right and if if you if you would rather work by notes you can press uh you can press this little music note in the bottom left hand corner. Let's see. Apparently it's not working at the moment. But normally you can you can you can switch okay oh so no it's the right hand corner. So you can switch to uh, tiles and it's the notes rather than it being actual keys. And on the top you have a option for octave the top right hand corner you have so you can switch between the octaves so if i want to play higher up on the piano and you can also turn your phone sideways and and it'll make the piano a little bit longer and then this is so this right here is uh uh the snapping so, uh that's this little magnet right here so if i take this magnet off and i hit record and I just press notes like that and i hit stop if I go to this, it's gonna show all those notes I just hit, but you can see it's in between the lines here. If you wanna snap your notes to to it, so like if I take this off, I can, I can move these freely, but if I put the magnet on, it's gonna snap it automatically into the timing of the song or into the timing of BandLab. Um, also additionally in settings so like let's say I'm playing that that little track I just recorded back right if you double click the top bar where the numbers are you can highlight that area and it's gonna replay that section of a song on repeat and so you can listen to it and you can make adjustments accordingly if you double click the track it'll open you up into that snap track as well and you can hit play and you can just analyze your music and um, also keep in mind if that's active and you hit record it's gonna take you right back to the beginning so you see I, I I'm hitting recording right now so mo for a different example I'm gonna make a quick vocal track so this is just an example vocal track but let's say I was recording right and I stopped right here and then I wanted to continue recording if I hit record it's gonna jump me back to the beginning and overwrite everything that I just made so if I like I stopped here and I hit record now it's overwriting all the stuff that I just made and you don't want that um, and then in the settings wheel on the top you have just different things here so you have uh, view automation off on volume pan um, that's if you have already implemented automation you can view it in the tracks um, snap to grid is kind of that same thing that magnet it snaps to grid same with the uh, snap to grid that's like if you're adjusting these and you need to move it back by a couple seconds if you have that snap to grid on what happens is when you're moving this you see how it's snapping rather than giving me a free adjustment to be able to actually adjust it. And if, let's say your your vocal track is off from what, what you want, where, where you need it, like a vocal track is, um, you can always take and write where, that, write where that's at, slice it, and then you have this re, that repeat fe feature here that's highlighted on top, so it's gonna keep playing that section of the song, right? You can double click, or you can click on that, and you have options. So the first one's a trash can, that's delete. The second one is copy. Once you copy something, when you press back on here, it gives you a clipboard, which means paste. And then you have loop right here. 
So now it's, it's looping this. So then if I pull this loop, it's just gonna keep repeating that little part. See what I mean? And then uh, if you hit these three dots, you have a couple options. Again, the fade, you have denoise, which will take the noise out of the background. Um, it's kind of just a, it's, it was an experimental feature thing, but uh, it, it, uh, it just kind of cleans up the track a little bit. If you're gonna do any type of denoising or like track balancing, I highly suggest using Audacity. It's an app for, you can install into your computer and uh, it's gonna find all the peaking point, points in your... And then, uh, then, uh, let's see. Then you have an option in these three dots. It says shift. This is gonna allow you to change where the track position is by the millisecond. So like plus three milliseconds, whatever. And uh, so yeah, these are just some of the options and stuff that you can do with BandLab. Other than that, it's gonna be really more implementing, experimenting, trying things. You see the little volume knobs in the bottom lower uh, left hand of the screen. You click on those and that's an overview of your tracks. This, you have your left pan, your right pan, and then you have, if you click the three dots, it says move up, rename, so you can rename this track, like a example. And so now it's named example, and it displays that there. Um, you can also download it, and download it to your device. Um, that's like, it, let's say you ported a beat in with the computer version of BandLab and the, the revision key isn't set, you don't know what the revision key is. If you hit that download button, it'll download that beat to your phone and then if you just push it back into BandLab, it'll auto set the revision key. Um, then you can also remove it. So I just removed that. And again, if you remove something and as long as you haven't hit save, you can always hit that back button. But the second you hit save, and if, so if you double click the save button, it'll auto save, it won't publish it. If you press it once, it'll give you the option to publish. Um, but now you can see on the bottom that that, re reverse, uh, that reverse arrow that was down there is now grayed out and I can't use it. This is your metronome. So this is like a tick, tick, tick. And that's just kind of helps you keep on timing with singing and stuff. Um, then you have your beats per minute. And then you have your metronome volume. You can adjust that accordingly because depending on how sensitive your microphone is, you might, uh, you might hear the metronome ticking in the background and you don't want that going back into, into, the, into the phone and, and or computer depending on what, ver what, what version of BandLab you're using. And you can hear it in the background of the song. You don't want that. Count in. So you can go one bar or two bars. So let's say there's a spot on a song where you're singing and stuff and uh uh well let's say let's say you you want to you want to start out the song immediately with singing right or or whatever with vocals if you use count in you can see it sets you back and it's counting you in and you can immediately start singing or doing whatever you want to do again if that if that thing on the top the little red uh bar on the top is highlighted it'll just repeat that section but count in counts you in to your track and then if you're like making a vocal track and you get to a point where you messed up one word right and you don't want to just hit record and jump right into it if you use the count in feature like if i move over here and i use the count in feature now it's set me back two bars and it's counting me in and then it's dropping me in right there on that spot then going further down, um, you have input device. So right now it says iPhone microphone. I use a Yeti blue microphone with a iPhone adapter. Um, and it, so it'll give you options for additional outputs and inputs. Um, then you have tuner, which is uh, like if you're tuning something uh, like a guitar, uh, th this is the tuner and it will, it, it can help you. I mean, I know how to tune a guitar by ear, but then there's uh, also on the bottom, it says learn mix editor in four quick steps. And this is just some additional information.
and kind of what I broke down earlier in this video. And then if I hit save and I hit view, you'll see, I'm gonna go back, projects, untitled. You'll see the two different revisions because remember when I saved it earlier, the it saved that version, but when I saved it again, it saved a new version. So you can always go back to your previous version but nothing in between those without saving, if that makes sense. And even when you uh, save a project, uh, and if you open it up at a later time, you can always still go back in and pull that track over and it's gonna have the original vocals that were there. So hopefully that helps give you a better description of BandLab. Other than that, it's gonna be more actually working one-on-one. -on -one. With, with you and your time and what you put into it is what you get out of it.